you're with CNBC TV 18. This is your one-stop destination for all things budget. We'll be analyzing budget 2016 for you. But what exactly does the big corporate voices of India Inc. make of budget 2016? And has the government done enough to keep the investors interested in the Indian economy? Well, we at CNBC TV 18 have been speaking to a whole host of corporate bigwigs to get you their views on the budget fine print. Here's a small slice from the conversation Shireen Bhan had just a short while ago with Rajiv Memani of Anson Young, we are Ripin Sondhi of JCB India and others. Listen in. Rajiv, you know, we were talking uh, ahead of the budget and you said that you were expecting at least a 1% cut in corporate tax rate. That doesn't seem to be the case. In fact, uh, corporate tax rate to be cut to 29% from FI18 for companies with a turnover of less than 5 crore rupees. Unless the fine print has something different, uh, are you disappointed? Yeah, I mean, I, everyone was anticipating since he had announced it last year. But I think what he has done parallelly is the incentive rationalization has also been much slower. So if you look at SEZ, he has gone up to 2020. On the R&D side also, the rationalization, I mean, finally it goes up to 100% by 2020. I'm not sure when accelerated depreciation kicks in, uh, but that if that kicks in next year or that kicks in the year after, I'm not very clear on that. And the other thing is for new companies. So for, for, for ease of business, for doing business, uh, uh, for Make in India and everything else, for the new companies that are coming in and trying to set up manufacturing in India, they can go with a clean break and, and you know, have 25% tax rate, obviously without any of the incentives and everything else. So I think there is some, some benefit, uh, some, uh, some things that have, uh, uh, you know, are, are probably on the incentive side and therefore the tax rate reduction hasn't come through, but I think he's tried to rationalize through this. I think the key message what he has done through on the tax side is first is he's tried to expand the tax base. Uh, he has gone in for simplification. Uh, there is a lot of emphasis on tax dispute resolution. And fourth is benefit uh, to the lower income. Uh, whether it's in terms of uh, you know expanding the rebate from 2,000 to 5,000 rupees or first time home buyers below a certain level of income, uh, you know, or notional rent that people, you know, that, uh, that gets attributed. So I think that a lot of benefit has gone there. Uh, 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 Vipin Sondhi, uh, big allocation for the roads and highways sector, Pradhan Mantri, Gram Sadak Yojana. Uh, you know, what do you think that this is finally going to mean as far as infrastructure is concerned? A big thrust, uh, Shireen, and somewhat expected as well that it will be focused on rural and I agree, I want to add to that irrigation as well so that there is less dependence on the vagaries of monsoon. So if you really add up PMGSY, e railways and irrigation, it comes to a huge 2,19,000 crores. This is critical because after agriculture, construction is the largest job employer across all levels of people. And it's so important to establish this connectivity. Electrification of all villages and in a time-bound manner, I think it was announced as 2018, so it's nice to see that some dates are being put on certain aspects. Okay, Vinayak, uh, very quickly, your comments, how would you sum up uh, what's the bucket list that you've made for us today on the back of what the Finance Minister has announced? Uh, largely along expected lines, a big push uh, from the overall governmental system to roads and railways. Vipin's already mentioned that 2.18 lakh crores is a humongous amount for one fiscal year. Shoots per growth. If you ask me for a label for this year, I'd very clearly say this year was the rural infrastructure year for the budget announcements. Across irrigation, water bodies, rural electrification, rural roads, uh, and all these put together, including Mandi towns, 100 uh, uh, urban villages to bring on e-market platforms. The entire thrust is on rural infrastructure, most welcome from a rural consumption demand point of view, and also from political economy. Over and above that, I think he has listened to what the private sector has been saying about PPP. He has put together a mechanism for resolving disputes from construction with construction companies where there's a lot of liquidity stuck. He has accepted the principles that PPP projects require renegotiation. So he has said he's putting in guidelines. He has approved a new credit rating mechanism to make it easier to, for companies to raise funds as the projects progress 
from development risk to construction risk to operating risk and the credit, you know, the risk falls and therefore the credit rating increases. It makes it easier to raise finances. And finally, he's made it far simpler to get going with REITs and Invest Trusts, both of which were languishing for some uh, clarifications on, on, on the dividend policy. So he's cleared the air, a rural infrastructure year, big push on public expenditure, and, and therefore, uh, along, largely along expected lines. Months in a rural electrification, advancing the timeline for 100% rural electrification to 2018. Uh, uh, given what you've seen as far as the power sector is concerned, and on the face of it, uh, the overall thrust of the budget, how would you read it? Oh, I think, Shireen, it's a fairly balanced budget. I think it's, you know, it's really taken the tack of pushing uh, rural demand and uh, rural infrastructure. And hopefully that then helps revive the overall economy uh, from a demand standpoint, which is really the thing that has been missing in the, in the economy so far. I think the other thing that uh, he's also done, which is I think very important, is that he stuck to the, to the fiscal deficit target of 3.5%, which I think is very critical because it now gives the RBI ammunition to cut interest rates further. And if that happens, then certainly that will itself provide a fillip to consumption demand as well as to investment demand. And I think the other thing that he's also done is, you know, he's, he's changed the name of the clean energy says to the clean environment says. So obviously the idea is to put in a few more, uh, perhaps Swachh Bharat type of initiatives into it. And he's also doubled the says from 200 rupees to 400 rupees uh, a year, which really means they'll collect almost 20,000 crores every year under that particular says, which actually can be used in multiple different fairly positive ways in encouraging uh, activities under the clean environment program. So I think what they've done is they've tried to really not give any sector-by-sector -sector type of uh, benefits, but I think they've tried to focus on improving the overall systemic efficiency of uh, governance to whatever extent was possible to announce in the budget. And I think that overall will lead to a more easier environment going forward. Uh, and in some senses sets the base for a slightly more broad-based uh, growth uh, going forward as well.